job was that? All they wanted you to do was say, don't run the red lights at level crossings. Yes, that. And what sort of imbecile watches a train crash into a car and then jumps up and down shouting, that's touched? Oh, I like, I've decided, making public information films. Now, I'm going to do one on speeding. No, really, I am. Honestly, I'm going to set you and May on fire, right? May gets on a motorcycle, goes really fast, see if he can put himself out. You stand still. Just, no, this is a bad idea, all right? And then I've got a skyscraper in it. But anyway, listen, I'll flesh it out later, because now we're going to do the news. Yes, and we begin with the Maserati Coupe, which is a car we've never been entirely sure about, mainly because we don't think it's that good-looking. However, there is a new one. It's called the Maserati Gran Turismo. I have a picture of it, and it's a thing of beauty, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Ooh, that yeah. is gorgeous. Hey, you can tell Christian Scott Thomas is coming into the studio as a guest today. How? He's wearing a suit. Look at him. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> all my jeans are in the wash. Oh, really? All of a sudden, 92 programmes we've done, you've been in jeans. Now, today, when Kristen's coming in, they're all mucking. I thought he was going for a job interview. He's got that. <laughs> exactly right. It's exactly how he looks. This Maserati... He's had his hair cut as well, hasn't he? He has. <laughs> you have. I have had my hair cut because it was too long. Were well, you combing week? it frantically before Shut you up. <laughs> What did you say? I was going to say, last week I had mine cut, and you said having your hair cut on the studio day was gay. <laughs> did you? I said you should spend more than four pounds on a haircut, James. That's what I actually said. So why didn't you? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> anyway, the Maserati. This Maserati, what's it got under the bonnet? It's a 4.2 4 V8. Same as the old one? Yep. 405 horsepower, automatic gearbox. It's going to be £73,000. I'm besotted with it. I, I think it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, if you're thinking of buying like an Aston DB9 or uh, V8, now that's the alternative. It is a good looking thing, but there's an alternative to the alternative. It's got a sister car. Let's have a look at that. The Alfa Romeo 8C. Come on, say it. <laughs> He's been practicing all week. Here we go. Competizione. Yeah! Like on sneeze, but it is related. Um, it's got a 4.7 litre V8, so the engine's slightly bigger. It's related underneath, but it's got this beautiful carbon fibre body over the top. The only thing is, as an alternative, there is a problem. They're only making 500, and they are all sold. But I think that's better looking, actually. Nah. Maserati. No, Maserati's better. Put the Maserati back up. There, yeah, that's I think better. The better looking. No, I'd have that. Well, why don't you ask Christine which she'd prefer? <laughs> Well, have that. It'll be nice to talk to somebody intelligent. <laughs> now, news this week of the most <laughs> unsensible car I've ever heard of. Volkswagen Passat, here it is. It's R36, got V6 engine, four-wheel drive, body-hugging sports seats, low-profile tyres, whole nine yards. Thing is, though, if you want a sports saloon, the last two words that pop into your head after, say, Mr. and Kipling are Volkswagen and Passat. It just doesn't I mean, make any sense. No, it, it's like saying, would you like some more fruitcake, Vicar? It's got cocaine in it. <laughs> <laughs> Ludicrous. Now, hey, on the way down here this morning, okay, I saw something so amazing that I took a photograph of it. Uh, here it is. Um, I want to stress I wasn't driving, uh, obviously not taking pictures, I was in the... I was you were sitting on the driver's lap by the look of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing that. Uh, thing is, though, it's a Peugeot 1007. They've sold one! Somebody's bought one! Wow. <laughs> Somebody went into a shop and said, I'd like a small car, but can you make it really, really heavy with really complicated doors, and I'd like to pay money for that. Yes, I want to go from 0 to 60 in 18 seconds. That's how slow it is. That's how slow it is. Why are you in a Rolls-Royce Phantom? The day that Kristen Scott Thomas is in the studio, <laughs> you suddenly decide that you need to test a phantom again. Parked it just outside, have you by any chance? It's out there, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Where it can be seen? Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it would be Do you right. seriously think she's going to be impressed by some yellow-toothed fat old man with... <laughs> Pubes for hair getting out of somebody else's Rolls Royce? <laughs> At least he's had his pubes cut. <laughs> It's pathetic. We have the results of the Top Gear survey. This is where you tell us what it's like to own various cars. 56,000 of you responded. We're very grateful to you all. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that the car, the most satisfying car that you can own, um, according to the people who actually own it, not just test driver, is a car I've championed for years, the Honda S2000 oh, no. again. No, no, no. And what do you say is the best small sports car? BMW Z4. Which came 62nd. Oh. And you, Porsche mm, Boxster, as yes. I recall, you say that's better than the Honda. That was 43rd. Oh, dear. Speaking of which, how are the electric windows in your Porsche Boxster? Fine. Still broken? No, they work. 
I'm not always in it when they work. Yeah, he's normally... <laughs> he's very often in bed when they work. Yeah, well, maybe, but my other car, the Fiat Panda, I think I'm right in saying... What's funny about it? <laughs> no, you couldn't be more right. He does have a Fiat Panda, and you're right, James, it was in the top ten with all the Skodas. What people are saying here is, is that it was better than they thought it was going to be. Yes. It's like, which is like buying a ton of manure. It doesn't smell that bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I am quite surprised by it because it's fun to drive, it's well made, it's economical, it looks good. It I'd... says all of that in the magazine bump, but it also says that people claimed it was predictably slow. Which it is, be it is. Why don't you tell the ladies and gentlemen what happened when we all met up the other day to go on a shoot, met at the hotel, we had to go to location, you turned up in your... We, I had an Aston that day and you had a 911. Yeah. Well, all right, but in fairness, I had only picked it up that morning and it only had eight miles on the clock and I didn't know what all the knobs and things did yet. What do you mean, all? There's only two knobs in it. Well, three if you count the one who bought it. But... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I said, look, I haven't got a map. Can I just follow you? And they said, yes, yes, of course you can. Come on, off we go. And they went off at 120 miles an hour. <laughs> you should have bought a faster car, then you could have kept up. You used it as an excuse last night to fondle my leg. Rubbish, you rubbish. Did. I'll tell you. <laughs> he said, oh, I'll give you a lift to the pub. And we got into a fit panel, he kept saying, stop touching me. You can't not touch someone. No. It's like it's sharing not... a bath with somebody. You've got... Get on the back of my horse, but don't touch me. <laughs> He exploited the diminutive size of my panda to sit there going, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I just... Can I just get back to this uh, list, OK, of the thing? I want to give you the bottom six, the six least reliable cars that you can buy. Uh, see if you can spot a trend here. Uh, six from last, Peugeot 407, Citroen C8, Renault Megane, Peugeot 307, Renault Espace, Peugeot 807. They're all, all French. French. I know. Yes. French. French have got better things to do than go around making cars. That's what it basically was. Pardon? What? Well, France, France is a lovely country. Hang oh, on, come on. Hang on. Where does Christian Scott Thomas live? Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that might have something to do with your sudden spirited defence of, of France. No, because I've always liked France. This is pathetic. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. You'd be exactly the same if Graham Norton was coming on. <laughs> the end of the news. Now, now as you probably know, uh, these days it's possible to make petrol from crops. And this gave us an idea. Why don't we give it a bash? I mean, how hard can it be? Well, one problem is that you would need to use tractors. And tractors is something that we know absolutely nothing about. So the production office said, go on the internet, do some research, and then turn up at our test track with whichever tractor you think would be best for the job of growing petrol.